I worry when you go out. Why don't you come here? Hi, hey, Tom. Hello, Steve. Majo, come help me set this up for Steve, please. Come on, Uncle. It's easy. Sorry, Ginger. It's just my uncle. He got to use online stuff now, so he need my help all the time. It's okay. It's the same here at my place. You know, I don't think he can cook with all these changes. Even when they start telling us not to check hands, he's still doing it. I keep telling him to stop, but he said it's our culture to check. Have you derived any taxi today? Oh, I've got to keep some money coming in, you know. How about you? I haven't seen you a changeover at all. Yeah, I'm home with the kids now. Hey, Majok, isn't it funny how Aussies are complaining about being harassed by police? Maybe. They will know what we go through all the time. I doubt it. I have an idea for a song with the words you wrote. That's awesome. I, I, I do miss our changeover catch-ups, Tom. Me too, Steve, but I can. Usually I should be working, not Angela. But it is because they need her to work long hours in the nesting home. I'm not a mother, but you need to do this role. I'm trying to get this Zoom thing up, but she doesn't make it easy for me, you know? That's not very safe. You should be able to see your kid. That's mine! 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 That's you're always talking. Please, Atia, call me back. I worry when you don't pick up my phone. Firstly, I just wanted to say thanks again for, um, for joining us. We understand that this is a difficult time for us all and um, we're all facing challenges and we think it's important to keep talking at these times. Yeah. Now, um, we'd like to invite you to join myself, Auntie Layla, Uncle Tong, Majok, and Steve in a dialogue about the pressures we're facing these days. We know it isn't easy to hold an online discussion, but we ask everyone to be patient. There will be some difficult issues that are raised, but we ask you to take on the discomfort and please be respectful of each other. So um, to begin, I'd like to open this dialogue by asking how you feel after seeing this um, drama. Is there someone that you sympathize with or empathize with and how does it connect with your situation? It's the boy is crying, so don't be happy. It's really, you need to talk deeper. Why, I, you know, what, what's the problem? And he says, I'm anxious when you go out. I guess the environment sometimes is not supporting freedom but we should not be living in fear. So they should be dialoguing more. That's the mother. And the uncle is so neglecting the children. It's, a, it's his responsibility. As an elder, I have a lot of challenges, you know, and I need more support in terms of teaching online is something I never um, tried before. And, 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 and the young generation that one, you know, know better. Like sometimes they feel, 
you know, the, the parents or the, the fathers, they're putting a lot of pressure, but we don't mean, we need help. Despite the fact that they come to him at home, he cannot say that you go back, but you have to not to, not, not to shake hand. So, and that situation is facing us because already we have a mindset of African. So uh, we, we don't want to cope with the situation of coronavirus. So this is what I want to say. When someone <laughs> tells like, you know, I feel like, you know, to shake hand and give some hug is African way. You know, when family friend or your friend and you don't shake hand, you feel like it's a big thing to us. It's been, it been a great, it's like it been great living with an uncle, but at the same time, I miss my mom being around. And also, I want to be able to be free to do my own thing, you no know, looking up the kid all the time. I don't mind doing it, but I can't be doing it full time because I need to focus on my studies. <laughs> I need to talk to my friends sometimes because I haven't seen them for a long time. So it's really difficult on me. Your, uh, your aunt, your husband, is, he felt like he can't, he can't control the situation like um, African male do. So he can't work and he feel like he's really, his power has been taken away by the, uh, by the woman having the money coming in. And that is actually against uh, your auntie. So in a normal situation, I would be home with, with you and, and the rest of the family and because you understand that situation. And that is the thing we have to deal with, you know. But sometimes you have to wear your uh, your parents' shoes and be able to have a sympathy for them. No, mom, but you need to understand too, like, you know, I'm important to you too, as auntie at the end. So you need to understand that too. It's about how do we create a very environment where we can discuss about, actually understand about each other's feelings, what's happening, how can you help me emotionally or mentally, if I'm going through things, I expect my parent or my mom to actually talk to me. That way I understand. I say, okay, this is how it is. But at the same time, it's very valuable that, um, yes, in Africa, we say, okay, you're the young person, you need to do this, but you're actually pressuring that young person. You know, as you know, young people, they, a young male, they need a, a male figure and, and his father is not around. And so to be able to, you know, for me to give a responsibility to, to his uncle is because I know him. He loved him and he, he will not have uh, intention to, to, to not to appreciate or not to look after him. But because it's quite hard because he's struggling too and we're all struggling and that when the problem come and it's not an issue, it's not going to last forever. And Auntie, have you had a conversation with um, Majok about the situation and how you're both feeling? Yeah, I do, I do, as I know that he has to studying and I don't, I don't want to compromise his studies. That's the main thing that I talk to him about. So, and because I am dealing with other issues as well, as a single mom, as well as looking after my sister, I just don't have the, I just don't have a capacity to be able to, uh, to, to, um, to have the time to understand what he, he coming from. Most of the mothers here need to understand that there is a problem, you know, in, a, in a, a setting we are in, and places like Australia, because they're dealing with a lot, and we, don't, we are not equipped to do that, to, to actually to help them. But you know, they said when we're in Rome, we behave like a Roman. The environment that we are now is different, totally different from where we come from. So there's something that says, uh, you know, that taught us societal decorum was understanding that says we have to learn, we have to relearn, and unlearn. So whatever we learned that might not be appropriate in this setting, we have to relearn where we are. This place that we're in is a different ball game. Our children are not playing with only Africans, they're playing with all these nationalities and they go to their places and they see that they're in a foreign land in their home. So they are in their home, but their home is so foreign to them. And there's an adage in Africa that says, if a child is good, it belongs to the father. If a child is bad, it belongs to the mother. So if you leave this child to suffer and then suffer, 
an adverse effect happen to him, it's going to be your problem. Then you're going to have a compounded problem anyway. You know, so this guy doesn't have problem now, but he's stressing and he's trying to say something. He said, you said he doesn't have a father. Now he doesn't have a mother. You see, he's becoming like he doesn't have anybody because you're not there. You, your priority is somewhere else. I think we need to stop saying where we come from. We're not there anymore. We're in a different land. We need to learn a little bit, at least to make our children sane, to make them sane. Otherwise, they just die in silence. I think the biggest thing that um, COVID-19 or the lockdown has taught me or that I have reflected on as a mother is stepping back and actually asking myself, what do my kids want? It, it's taught me to step back and actually um, work with their routine, work with what it is that they might want to do and listen to them as young as they might be. So for my joke, I know mom is really willing to do the best for her son by saying, oh, Majok might need a male figure, but is that what he wants at this time during the lockdown? Maybe what he wants is a mother's love. Because of the change in environment, the change in our routines, and the change in whatever the, it is that we might have been doing before the lockdown, a lot of us are becoming anxious, and that's leading a lot to depression, to anxiety. And for us in the South Sudanese community, that's a bit of something that we don't talk about openly. So normally we just say Indo or you know um, I'm not feeling well, but people don't openly talk about it. So at this very time, the fact that Majuk is able to say his feelings and say how he, he feels, that's a big step forward. That's what we need in our community. You know, we need to talk as a mothers. We need to get together. We talk about how we're going to empowering our kids. And because, you know, like I, I, I know I'm wrong, I shouldn't be with my sister, it's not my priority. I should be with my son, which is my priority. And because of the culture thing that I think that they all my, I can let my son to be with his uncle and I can go and look after uh, my sister, which is it doesn't work here. So it is something that we need to talk about. If someone wrong, like I did wrong, we need to talk about, so we, we actually need to dialogue, all of us, to see what is a solution for us to, to forward for our children. I meet a lot of people, and people straight away want to greet you and give you a hug, you know? And once you tell someone, sorry, I can't do that, you know, they get offended. Which, uh, from my community, is something hard. You just want to please other people for the sake of, you know? Um, you don't want someone to get angry, but it's not about us, it's about our kids, you know? You go and greet someone and come back home, and then whatever you bring from outside or whatever that person brings back to you is going to, is going to affect your family and your kids. Uh, another thing with um, Layla, and this is um, actually all women, all mothers in our community, South Sudanese community, we all relate to it, you know? When um, her son said, um, I can't go anywhere. You know, the first thing she did, she smiled. And she's like, oh, that's good. You know, <laughs> you know how I worry about you <laughs> when you go out. <laughs> and if there's one thing all mothers in our community are actually, um, you know, people are not concerned about Corona. You know, they're all happy that Corona made their kids stay home. You know, <laughs> and not go out. <laughs> Because we, when they go out, we don't know what they do, but we're all happy that they're home, you know? So for that side, we thank Corona. I'm a working mom. I'm a single mother, a working mom. And um, before Corona, 100%, I'm not going to say I spend two or three hours with my kids. We leave home 7 a.m. in the morning, come back um, probably like 7, and we... We're, we're busy with dinner, homework, shower, go to sleep. Now that we're locked down, we are on each other's faces from morning to night. We don't go anywhere. There's no school, there's no sport, there's nothing. For me, I, I now have a chance to actually know my kids. There are things I didn't know about them. And I'm a Dinka woman. My kids should actually be talking their own mother tongue language. My kids don't talk Dinka language. And now that we are locked down, 
we have time to actually sit down and talk as a family. We don't speak to our kids, you know, we don't speak to our kids, not all of us, I'm not going to generalize, but many of us, we don't speak to our kids. We just, you know, treat them as kids. You don't know what they're going through and what they're dealing with. When you talk about mental health, a lot of uh, young people are fighting a, a fight with an invisible enemy, okay? And then when you talk about before, uh, the parents who actually came overseas, they come with either physical or uh, traumatic events that they have with them, okay? And most of it is suppressed. They don't actually talk about it. Yes, culture is important, but in some aspect of some of the culture stuff, we need to absolutely destroy it because it's the main cause of most of the thing that South Sudanese particularly, they just, you revolve around that. And you're actually, um, you're just keeping things which are not valuable, okay? And I think some, Temi said it, we're in an environment that is different and we need to change according to the tune of the music. 100% for some of us, we're not living, we're not going home. And if you're not going home, are you gonna continue to be on that, what you call the cultural aspect? Or are you gonna try, try to change to better, for better of the future? There are some culture aspects need to change. I grew up in a culture where men cannot cook. Women have certain job to do and men have certain job to do. But during this coronavirus, my wife, she working full time I'm always at home, I kid, I cook for kids, helping them to do homework. You, you know, I, I never teach, I'm not a teacher, but I become like a teacher assisting like, you know, my kids and um, I have challenges. Network is so bad in my area. I'm not good at um, connecting the iPad or iPhone. I'm not good at it. I'm trying my best. I changed totally, I can cook now. We, we build a strong relationships than before during this coronavirus. We go work around with them and, and you know, I become closer more than their mom. But before I don't have a time with them. Yeah, you know, uh, it's, it's a good thing. I have changed. Hey, but Jock, how's uncle's cooking? Is it good or? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not that bad as you, as you were saying, like, you know, like even though I said, you put a lot of pressure on me sometimes like we will become more closer as a family i am very proud of you my joke culturally we come from standard families you know i know we need to change but still i have some families back home you know africa culture sometimes when i say we have changed and we you know we we leave nuclear families I have kids here, I have my wife here, but I still have siblings. My mother is still in Africa. You, you know, I still have some responsibility. I'm dealing with so many things. And, and young people, sometimes, because my kids, they've never been to Africa. They know nothing about Africa. But I know situation. When I tell them I'm dealing with so many things, I have other responsibilities. They feel, oh, we are kids here. We, you know, they don't know. I, I just wonder how do we all deal with it because everyone's got their own shit at the moment. So, yeah, how are different people dealing with their mental health issues? I love seeing my friend, you know, going out, going to get something to eat and all that. But I can't do it right now. So what I try to do to get rid of it is just like, you know, talk to them through the app, this house party, this Facebook, this phone call, FaceTime sometime, just trying to kill time. And also, like, you know, discuss about what's been going on in their life because we haven't seen each other for a long time. What they're doing to stay out of this mess. And also, like, you know, we play video games and all that. So, yeah, that's what basically what I've been doing, just trying to stay focused. Yeah, I've been doing the same, like, just, um, you know, keeping in touch with friends on Messenger um, and just, like, staying connected even though we can't see each other face to face and also playing music like that's been that's made me really happy while I've been indoors and I can't get out. You know I have a difficult time I'm missing my son and my sister is in trouble and I am just absolutely uh, uh, in a, in a, uh, worried you know I worried a lot but 
Australia, this is lucky. People are lucky here in Australia. But when you see people, um, so it, it made me questioning how, why people are act like that. But I understand. People never experienced what we did. Has someone come as a, in that background with a war? You just cope with, you know, you think that the, the uh, being alive is, is a part of pain. And so if you, you only avoid pain or suffer when you died and being alive, you know, you have to, that's what it means to be a human. So that is how I, I see it. And that's how I'm, I cough. I said, I'm alive. I have to fit, face this stuff. What is the position of a therapy in this case? Because uh, if you get a culturally appropriate therapist, it could be a good one. Um, I say that I know Ajoy is a good guy, but some of other on other of our children, so most of them they internalize. They keep things inside of them. If we talk like this, they still keep it. Would you consider therapy? I mean, I just want to know if that's an option in this case. I try to find someone to talk to my sister about that online. And I book, her, and I book a, a counselor for her. And she said, what? He just wants me to talk. And he doesn't say anything. I am not interested in that. And she refused to go again. He said, in Africa, we exchange dialogue. You know, you talk to person, you talk, they talk. But for me to be just me complaining about my own issues, and you get to look at me like that, I don't really, I'm not interested. I said culturally appropriate therapists. So, uh, I mean, I did therapy, I studied it as part of, uh, mm -hmm. part of my course that I did. And exactly what you said is what they said to us. Just observe, just listen, just, you know, internet, all this. It doesn't, and I said, it will not work in my community because we exchange. We want you to share with us, be authentic with me. Don't say, you know, I, I, I'm just going to sit down here like a log of wood and say nothing. It doesn't work for us. It, it sounds like there's a bit of a, a stigma around maybe going to see a therapist or people don't know like if how to find a culturally appropriate th therapist either. That's the problem. We don't know how to find them and they're not many of them. If I want to cancel regarding marriage counseling, for example, why you refer me to a 20 year old child that's never married, I don't believe he's going to be able to tell me the experience of marriage. We have our own understanding of who we want. And we want somebody who is truthful, who is strong, who will tell us the truth. And most of the therapists, the way they taught, they taught not to speak. They taught to just listen to you. you they, that we're looking for shoulder of someone to cry on. We're not looking for shoulder to cry on. We need, we need help. If you're an African, mostly you need an African therapist. If you're a man, most African men, want yes. African men to talk to them. Thank An you. African woman yeah. who wants another African woman to talk to us in terms of psychology, because you need to know what, where we're coming from. I worked at Support Work about five years ago, and um, my role was to support the newly arrived migrants. And one of the obstacles um, I came through was actually you, they, they prepared to talk to me as support worker, tell me their problems. But once you mention that, um, because I'm not a professional, once you mention that I'm gonna um, uh, transfer you to a professional, straight away there's that wall, you know? It's like, you're accusing me that I'm crazy. What we did is had one professional and we brought that person to our office. Instead, the, the session was actually done in our office. Just to, you know, give them that security, you know? and um, be able to talk. It's how to start, you know, how to trust the person you're talking to. So that hard in my community, and I think people are coming out of it now, slowly, slowly. Because what we had in mind, you go to counselor, that counselor is gonna solve my problem. This is, this is the mentality a lot of people actually go to the counselor. I have problem, I'm not here gonna to talk to you and you don't solve my problem. So I come to you, and I tell you my problem, I need a solution straight away. A lot of people have started now to step out, you know, from that um, mentality and, and trust counselor. I'm sure with ha having other African, you know, um, 
um, as therapists, I think that actually will break that wall between um, people that need therapy and, 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 and the therapist themselves. Like Auntie Layla, <laughs> she'll be able to get help for her sister and for herself, and all of them need help. You know, Maju, Tong, um, Layla, and the sister. I'm, I'm always focused on mental health because that's where I see a lot of um, young people who are actually, uh, this COVID-19 thing has created a big thing. So for me, if you're a parent who your kid is locked in in their, in their room, they don't come out, they don't have a good conversation with you, the question is, what is happening? Yes, they can speak online and all that. What is actually going on in that person's mind? All the services that is currently available need to actually rethink, you know, reorganize the way the function because we're living in multi -country, um, multicultural environment. And if you want to actually make it better, you need to employ every single person in there. You know, representation is very important, especially for uh, what I see is with young people, they want to see their own in there. Yeah, mentally, because when I go to office, when I see another as a black person there, I know, okay, this is a good company. Why? Because they employ someone, even my own. So it gives me a motivation to even go, I want to apply for more. Yeah, let's, um, I'm not going to talk about employment. You know, uh, for me, it's about that environment where everyone feel like, yes, I'm valued. I just want to give a few tips on how to boost mental health so that it started weighing around um, our brothers and sisters, our aunties and uncles tears. Tell yourself something positive. You know, all this helps boosting your mental health and also write down something you are grateful for. Also, you can focus on the things that matters in the moment. And exercises also help a great deal. You know, that also helps to boost in your mental agility and stay focused. You know, stay focused and eat good meal. You know, these are some of the tips we should be taking into, into, into consideration. And we also have to take a break, which is very, which is very important. We take a break and go to bed on time. These are all funny tips that it's, it's, it looks funny, but it's, it's, did, it's did a great deal in our health. Also, it could be uh, fear, uh, miscommunication, mixed messages in regards to our community. Uh, and um, we are on a way to understanding mental health a little bit better. The fact that people are actually talking to someone and discussing their issues, it means that our communities actually entertain the idea of that mental health is actually an issue. But now it's about how do we get them to actually start talking about the right information and talking to the right people. Yes, understand there's a, there's a way, there's a need to change the entire setting of mental health instead of it being so clinical to something more casual. I understand right. that informal is what our community has been used to. Informal conversations are the what really helps our community move forward. I'll give you an example. We go to play football as young people and we'll play for an hour. We'll spend three hours talking and laughing about our misfortunes as refugees, as young kids from Africa. And that's a way we used to deal with therapy. So that context has changed now. We're in a different context. And also we come from a community that is very, uh, should we say, um, collective. We all live in the same place. We live in the big uh, villages and we live in even our houses are designed in a circle, so we're facing one another. We're in a con where that's no longer there. And I'll say this, I think it applies to other migrant migrants that come here as well. We are all community oriented people. So I think mental health is we are on the right track. So I think this space and the dialogue has created the space for people to be able to speak about this stuff and welcoming everybody from different pathways, different communities has been really great because it means we can actually start learning from one another. So I really appreciated this um, dialogue and I hope you do more of this stuff and even touch on topics that we can talk about a bit more. I think that's a great um, point to end on because we will be having more of these dialogues in the future.
have a good time. No one say it easy, but I'm trying to celebrate life. the happiness but I have seen another dark side and many of you can bring into our